So when you wrote Nothing Else Matters, mm -hmm. which is considered a, a softer song, a ballad, really, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You were embarrassed to bring that to the band. Right. Because not only are you a shy person, but also it was a love song to a girlfriend at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Would you have buried that song rather than bring it to them? And how did it end up in the band's hands? I think Lars heard it and said, hey, that's really good. And I said, no, it's not. <laughs> how did Lars hear that song if you were ashamed of it? How did you hear it? You played it for me. <laughs> that's how he heard it. So you weren't that, so you weren't that ashamed. And did, it, Lars, did he come to you? Did James come to you and go, hey, man, I'm going to play something for you. I no, know. I mean it's always been a, there's always been a very open door policy. I mean we all trade. Usually, what would happen back in the early days is that uh, when we would after a tour go on break, like James would give me all his uh, ideas, Kurt would give me all his ideas. We'd all sort of trade ideas, and then we'd go away. And then when we'd start writing uh, a few months later, everybody would kind of have an idea of what everybody else was bringing to the table. And Lars, you uh, knew that song was going to be a hit. You had an argument with the record I was, company. It wasn't. It wasn't so much about a hit. It was just. More about a side of Metallica that I was really proud of, and I thought that everybody should see. Were you scared that the fans would revolt when they heard such no. a beautiful ballad? No, I think it's good to challenge the fans once in a while, actually. So the song "Nothing Else Matters." What if you, I said to you that this song could possibly be James's song to Lars? What do you think of that? Very true. It's Very a love true. song to your brother Lars. Yeah. It, 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 you probably didn't know that when you were writing it. You yeah. think you were writing no, it for I'm a woman. I'm start crying. No, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tur turn around. face you? You have yeah. to turn around and face me while you're singing. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a beautiful love song that no, really, I, came to, really came to be because, A, Lars, you gave James the confidence to release well, this like song. I, I said, I just, you know, when I heard it, it was in a... A kind of a, a rough state. Uh, the, all the parts on it now weren't there, but when I heard the verses, I'd never heard James sing like that, and it just moved me. And I knew that this was something that we had to share with the rest of the world. He felt too vulnerable at that time to sort of let that out there, but I knew that this was something that had to be shared with everybody. The woman you wrote this song for, did she know you wrote it for her? Does she have any idea, or you never told her? I think so, maybe. She knew. But it's gone way beyond that. You know, I, people come up to us and say, we used it at our wedding, we this and that. I mean, the, the Hells Angels had it in a little movie that they put together. So it is about brotherhood as well. And, it, and it's vague enough to relate to everything and, 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 needing, and needing another human, you know? All right. Here we go. Don't get for nervous. For Lars. This is for Lars. <laughs> Oh, 
forever trust in who we are No, nothing else matters Beautiful. 